The Caribbean Policy Development Center, in collaboration with the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, Mitabaro Unit, and UETV, have partnered on a project titled Voices of Women, which seeks to highlight women from Barbados and the wider Caribbean, reflecting on their work in the areas of education, community development, development work, healthcare, and politics. It is comprised of a series of interviews recorded by UETV featuring women with rich and diverse backgrounds. Today on Voices of Women, we highlight Annette Beckett. Welcome to UETV. My name is Karen Phillip from the Caribbean Policy Development Center. And here today on Voices of Women, we have Ms. Annette Beckett. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's start off with the, the, where most people know you from with netball. Being a female sport, you struggle, struggle. Okay. And um, we then had to, as, as the president, you had to come up with novel ways of getting John public involved, mm -hmm. the sponsorship involved, and the media mm -hmm. involved. And because you had to sell it, because mm -hmm. in the very beginning, we didn't have a, a netball stadium. We played in the community. Mm -hmm. um, our, our key area that we played, our Division One games, was at Police Boys Club there in Bay Street. Okay. And there used to be packed at night. The only place that didn't have anybody was the, the, the court where the players were playing. And eventually, um, in 1976, mm -hmm. the netball stadium came alive. Okay. And that really made a difference in terms of uh, continuity mm -hmm. in netball because then you had some place that was quote unquote home. Mm -hmm. and um, you were able then to do lots of other things. You were able to look at the season, change the season from how it was mm -hmm. to a more inclusive season. Okay. And you were also able then to, to concentrate some on your junior netball. Okay. And then you were able to, as a result of that, you were able then, yeah, in terms of administration, to get things like a national coach mm -hmm. um, who concentrated on bringing your national team to a standard. And we were successful in that area in 1987. Barbados placed six, seventh in um, Scotland in the World Championship, our okay. highest place. And this is under your presidency? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in 1990, 2003, mm -hmm. then we went to Jamaica in the World Championships again, and we placed eighth, which was the highest place in, of Barbados in the world. Okay. So earlier you talked about getting opening doors so that the athletes could have opportunities. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about the media. Is this also how you were able to wear the hats as a journalist? Yes, because um, as I said, netball was a premier sport and most men knew nothing about netball. So it was not reported on. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted it reported on, we had to do it. And that's how I started doing. I became a stringer um, for, for all the radio stations. And eventually then I started to do it other than just calling scores, mm -hmm. I started to give descriptions of what okay. went on. And then as a result of that, then I was a, um, a freelancer with VOB and then it went from there. So you believe in opening the doors or making the doors <laughs> and opening them yourself. <laughs> that is very encouraging. Mm -hmm. So how would you say, what challenges did you face in that arena as in the journalists? Oh, well, it comes right back to being female. I was the first female sports journalist in this region. Oh, okay. and therefore, um, attendant with that mm -hmm. was the latent discrimination that there is, uh, or shall I say, was. Some people still say it is when it comes to females in what they, uh, what men perceive as dominant mm -hmm. male areas. But um, I've had situations where I have turned up at um, assignments, and the persons doing the assignment said, "Is anybody there from VOB?" And they said, yes, I am. And they said, no, 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 we're looking for a man. <laughs> right? Well, how did you deal with that constant? Oh, that was fine with me. If they were looking for a man, and I was there, I just left. And when I got back to the station, I told my editor, well, they was looking for a man. Uh -huh. And then what would happen then is when they didn't hear a story in the sports news, somebody would call. Mm -hmm. And I must say that at that stage, my editor batted for me. Okay. You know, he would say, well, I said a reporter, mm -hmm. and you said you were looking for a man, and she's not a man. So mm -hmm. she, they made sense of saying. But that happened about two or three times, and then they got the message. Another area that was, um, say, like a sport like cricket, mm -hmm. which was predominantly male, um, there were certain areas that you couldn't go as a female. Although you were a reporter, mm -hmm. you couldn't go. 
And I remember trying to get an uh, interview with Richard at Lord's. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the Lord's guard, <laughs> in all this regalia, said to me in no uncertain terms that there's no way a woman is passing him. And I said, okay, so I stood up and mm -hmm. I showed it. <laughs> I shouted, and uh, Viv heard me. He said, what's the matter? I said, well, the guy won't let me pass. So Viv came for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you had, you had those instances, um, and in other areas, say even in, um, when, you, when you seek to promote the sport, mm -hmm. and you say it's predominantly female sport, um, some people, I think that has gone now, but some people used to decide that as because it was a predominantly female sport, it was no sport. So you, you then had to go through chapter and verse, yeah, right? And, and convince them mm -hmm. that it is a sport. And, and you know, when those th types of persons did come and watch the game, they were amazed. Okay. So you said you were the first female mm -hmm. news reporter. Sports reporter. Sports mm -hmm. news reporter, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And then you also said that your editors supported you, but you had mm -hmm. any other people around you that were supporting you through this? Oh, yes. The guys, the guys in the newsroom. Um, see, I, I had the added thing to me that I was also a cricket fan. Okay. So when they were talking cricket, I could chime in and, mm -hmm. and give the impression that I knew I was talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so they 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 um they supported me and people like Mike Goddard and Eric Nurse and mm -hmm. Eric King, King who was the editor then they 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 really supported me and anytime I was doing anything um, that I felt should be done in a particular way. They would allow me to do it, mm -hmm. and then if it didn't work, say, well, look, we didn't stop you, but it didn't work because X, Y, or Z. Okay. So that I wouldn't get the impression that they were stopping me because I was female. Mm -hmm. But uh, even Tony Cozy, Tony Cozy was a tremendous help to me because he was very pleased mm -hmm. to see females. And he, he really tried his heart to get me into commentating. But Craig got too many positions, so I can remember all. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you had a support system. Um, would you say that from this, you helped other women come in as well? Yes, because then what happened was after I became a full-fledged reporter, mm -hmm. there was the vacancy then for Stringer. Mm -hmm. So there were several persons that, um, and then not just with netball, it seems like um, hockey, because by then hockey had divided into male and female, okay. like tennis. So then you heard lots more females mm -hmm. um, in their own sport on the radio or writing those short clips in, in, mm -hmm. the, um, in, the, in the newspapers, both in Barbados and in the region. Okay. Because going into the region was the same problem. Because okay. when, when you went into the region and you say, oh, I'm Annette Beckett from Villa B, you say, yeah, so where's the reporter? So you're a regional <laughs> trailblazer. You changed the landscape of news reporting throughout the region. So how did you move? So you went from netball to media to then agriculture. Mm -hmm. How, how did how this transition happen? What was the driver behind that? Well, um, you know the old adage that they say behind every man there's a successful woman? Yes. But I was a successful woman <laughs> behind the man who held the farm. <laughs> but I didn't have time with it. Okay. Because I was so busy doing, mm -hmm. as he would say, my own thing. Okay. And then I decided that, I, that because things started to happen in netball, and mm -hmm. I figured that netball, because by then we had gone into national... I was the first female director from Barbados mm -hmm. on any international body. And therefore, the path, the path was there for yeah. other people to take up and go ahead. Uh -huh. So in terms of time, I didn't have to um, spend so much time with the game. Um, I would act in advisory capacities, but I didn't have to be there. Okay. As opposed to when I was president, I was there Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, from 6 until the finish. Okay. Right? After we got to the stage where I was the president and... Then I was the director. People were coming through, so I, mm -hmm. I didn't have to. I didn't have to be that. So okay. I had more time then. Okay. And um, my partner then sought to involve me because I talk a lot, talking for the farm. Okay. So I was the talker. If you wanted anything <laughs> about the farm, you check with Annette, uh -huh. right? And then from doing that, then I had to find out things. Mm -hmm. And from finding out things, then I recognized that. Agriculture was really not again a good deal in, in the region generally. Mm -hmm. And then um, again, because I talk a lot, I ended up then being in administrative functions in agriculture and the Barbados Dairy and Beef Association. Please uh, state what it stands for. Um, 
Barbados Dairy mm. and Beef Association, okay. so that's cows. Okay. Um, the Barbados Sheep Association, mm -hmm. yes, sheep. And um, then being a director on those, then I went on to be a director of the Barbados Agricultural Society. Okay. So in these three main categories of your life, because I'm sure you, you sound like if you have more hats you wore <laughs> that I'm not aware of, do you feel like you had to play a motherly role within there or there was assumptions about what you were expected to do as a female in these roles? Well, in netball, mm -hmm. because um, the, the so, any social ills that you found in Barbados, mm -hmm. were, you found them in netball, yeah. whatever it be. Um, um, poverty in inverted commas, um, behavior, um, especially between the ages of, I would think, 15 and 18. Mm -hmm. Young ladies then finding themselves. And then when they say to the mother, I go into netball, but netball happens to be a boyfriend. So then I will get a call, mm -hmm. right? And, and, or I will get a call at about midnight. And then time I got a call from a netball at midnight, I know the next thing was, Madam President, I got something to tell you. And I would say, hey, you're pregnant. So the areas like that. And then, you know, there's several issues that young ladies have in Barbados at school. Mm -hmm. um, and myself and my team, we did all that, but that's nothing that you shout about or anything like that. Because a lot of those young ladies, mm -hmm. to this day, when they see me, they call me Madam President. <laughs> Definitely. So, we we're going to go back to the agriculture section. Can you tell us more about your farm? Oh, well, it's a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. um, it's in St. James. And it's what, it's what we call a family farm mm -hmm. because most of the, the work that has gone into or goes into is, is through family. We have some workers who are family. Um, they're treated like family and behave like family. Right? If you come to the top of the door at gate, as you know, they ask you what you want. <laughs> So um, the farm, we supply, we are one of the dairy farmers that supply milk to Pine Hill Dairy. Mm -hmm. We also sell um, natural milk to people who will come to, to the farm, which we call farm gate milk. Mm -hmm. And that was the eye opener to me, because so many Bajans didn't know that you can buy natural cow's milk. Okay. They thought that you only had to buy the pasteurized milk. Okay. <laughs> So you changed things once again. <laughs> well, I don't think that's so much me as, as because our, our main clientele are Indians. Mm -hmm. And Indians prefer the uh, milk before it's passed, right? Because they do several things with it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. They, they do all sorts of things with milk. Milk is one of their staple diets. Okay. And then um, there were other farmers um, doing the milk. We were not the first. Mm -hmm. There were other farmers, but... I was surprised at the number of persons who didn't know. Because mm -hmm. when they come to, to us, they say, well, I've been living out here for the last 10 years, and I didn't know you can get milk uh, and farm. And then they could call names of other farms mm -hmm. that in some cases they live near, mm -hmm. and they didn't know. So we would say, well, you don't have to come all down here. You can yeah. go up farm X or farm Y, and then that was it. Okay. They just, Barbados just assumed, like with everything else that we assume, that they know natural organic things going on everything is processed and pasteurized okay <laughs> but from that i also gather that you are about community because you're not keeping all the resources to yourself you're telling people to go to other people as well well yes because sometimes is uh, milk is, is one of those very um precious foods mm -hmm. that you have to carry so the shorter distance you you, you travel with it after you done get it at, um, after you had gotten it at six degrees mm -hmm. the shorter distance you travel with it the better and more kept it is by the time you get at home. Mm -hmm. Because when, when we milk um, the cows, uh, the milk probably comes out of the cow at about uh, 20 degrees centigrade. But then immediately, mm -hmm. we have to get it down to six degrees in cooler, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and when it's in there, it has to remain six degrees or lower until Pine Hill Dairy collects it. Okay. So when you, as a, a, a customer comes, you are getting it at six degrees. Mm -hmm. So it's in your interest to keep it at that temperature as long as possible uh, before the break. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes um, if you come by me and say you have to go to St. Philip, you forget that you have milk in the car. Yeah. And by the time you get to St. Philip, the same milk is maybe 12 degrees. Yeah. And you still forget the milk. Mm 
So then the, mo the morning now when you want your breakfast is when you remember the milk. Mm -hmm. And it was in care all that time. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's not going to be no good, but it's not going to be as good as if you had kept the refrigeration throughout mm -hmm. its life. Okay. So we have all this talk in the region about climate change and being being aware of new technologies that could reduce our emissions. Does your farm take place in any can take any of those things in consideration? Oh yes, well in terms of climate change, um the weather the weather even if we didn't want to, mm -hmm. the changes in the weather mm -hmm. has said to us that it's not what the weather that we have now is not what we had twenty years ago. Mm -hmm and the effects of cows. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, cows do not like heat. So the last, I think it was three years, when we had temperatures of 28 and 29 degrees every day religiously, the cows just don't like the heat. They just tell well, it's too hot. I really ain't giving in the milk. <laughs> so you then have to find a way to, 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 to get the cows temperature down to where they are comfortable enough to give you the milk. And also, um, with the rain um, and drought, um, then we were forced, to, even if we had thought about it, we were forced to do it a lot quicker to rain harvest. Okay. So that when there's no rain, we mm -hmm. will still have water because the cow drinks about 20 to 30 gallons of water a day. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay, yeah. So um, they really can't tell the cow by the rain is falling, so you can't get no water. And as you know, the water, the conversion of water to milk mm -hmm. is 80%. Mm -hmm. Milk is 80% yeah. water. So um, we were forced to. Um, rain harvest and then um, that that works out quite well especially when, when we do get the rain and harvest it that works out quite well but um, harvesting as we keep saying to people does not solve a drought problem mm -hmm. because in order to harvest you must have had rain yeah and if there's a drought there's no, no rain, rain yeah. right so um, uh, you try, and most times it does, but if you have like the droughts that we had two years ago, mm -hmm. harvesting um, would have helped, but unless you got some rain, you couldn't, you had nothing to fill back out the containers, okay. right? So we were fortunate in that where we were, we didn't suffer a lot of outages from, from okay. the normal um, possible yeah. water, mm -hmm. but um, we, we had to become very novel in the way that we were harvesting water. We, we harvest it in some ways that you didn't think you would harvest water. <laughs> so you all have rain harvesting. You all have anything other technologies you all have on your farm? Well, we have the, the photovoltaic cells in terms of energy. Okay. Because, um, again, those two costs, mm -hmm. your energy and your water costs, are very high, mm -hmm. especially on something like a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. So the water harvesting assisted with bringing that down, and the photovoltaic also assisted with bringing that down because the photovoltaic system that we have looks after the entire operation of the dairy. Mm -hmm. Before that, our, our electric bill could have been anywhere between $600 and $800 a month. Now it's between $400 and $500 a month. Okay. And, there, and, um, and there's still some more that we can do mm -hmm. to, 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 um, to raise that, um, the, the input from, from the photovoltaic. And the good thing about photovoltaic, which I tell everybody, is that you don't have to fix it. As long as it's installed uh -huh. and it's installed properly, you're gone clear. Okay. And you have said, you have carried this message to the other farmers? Yes. As a matter of fact, some of the other farmers have, um, have decided and have gone that way. But of course, um, it was through the, uh, your organization that we were able to, um, to set up. Mm -hmm. So as you know, you set up, you, you have to work towards getting that money for the set up. Mm -hmm. So some of them are at that stage where they are working for the setup and then they will go about chicken farmers probably have more voltage okay. systems than, um, than, than cow farmers. All right. So in a close, then I'm going to ask you if you have any a particular message you want to give to Caribbean women at this time from all the lessons that you learn through all the different hats, if you could summarize what you could tell, tell us young women. <laughs> what I would say to Caribbean women is that do not make the error of believing that where there's a man and there's a woman, that there's competition. Okay. If there's a man and there's a woman, there's two individuals. Mm -hmm. And the better individual should win. Okay. So all you have to do is to be the better individual. And I'm not necessarily talking about the better looking or the better dressed, or I'm talking about the better individual mm -hmm. in the area that you are. Mm -hmm. I find that too many of us women 
depend on our femininity, uh -huh. and then we say we didn't get it. Uh -huh. But we didn't get it because we were not good. Okay. That, <laughs> yeah. And also to be very aware of the, the other side of like the social side, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the maternal side, mm -hmm. and if it's something, plan it. Because okay. you don't want to be involved and then all of a sudden you're pregnant and then you don't know if you want to keep the baby or you want to keep the baby and your husband or your partner don't want to keep the baby and you're spending three and four months working over this baby and then everything that you plan to do has gone, Yeah. right? So it's to be aware, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying that you um, become mathematical and boom, right now, right now, but just be aware of what's happening, the especially, to, right, yeah. especially to you mm -hmm. and therefore also your family. Mm -hmm. um, Nine times out of ten, as, as a woman in a field, especially in a field that was male-dominated, mm -hmm. your family tend to support. Okay. But their support is to keep saying to you, man, you can do that better than Harold. Man, you, that's their support. But yeah. that's not support. Yeah. Because all that does is put Harold against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> but um, family support is also good. When you have your family support, it's also good. And I find that with women who are those that have children, their children mm -hmm. really hang on to them mm -hmm. and, and help them a lot. You know, because the children come in before any any get any um, garbage, yeah. so they could come and see you doing something. Say, oh, mommy, that's so good. Or, oh, auntie, that's so good. When for other women, they stay about back it. That don't look good. <laughs> I understand. So, so have a good circle around you that mm -hmm. can speak mm -hmm. the truth to you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. Be aware of the possibilities when you're planning your family, mm -hmm. and as well, know know your know that you're worth. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have your skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is vital because mm -hmm. there are too many areas where I find that women, the, the first thing we come up with is that is because I'm a woman. Okay. And and when you delve into it, it's not necessarily because you're a woman. It's because you're a woman without the skills that the man have or that the other woman have. Because that's another problem, not yeah. woman to woman, mm -hmm. right? Um, as a matter of fact, you will find that woman to woman is even more difficult than man to woman. Yeah. Because when we get jealous and we want to get things, we, we, we are something else, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here, Annette. Thank you for watching UE TV. This has been Voices of Women. My name is Karen Phillip from Caribbean Policy Development Center. And today we had Miss Annette Beckett here with us. <laughs>